manager remained confident about his chances. He's certainly one of the most dedicated boxers I've been involved with. I don't know of anybody who trains harder for a fight than he does. Um, for six weeks before a fight, he turns himself into a hermit. He goes to the gym and he goes on the road to run and he eats and the rest of the time he spends in a room isolated with a television set and he'll watch TV and go to sleep. And I think it should be a good fight. I don't think it's going to be one-sided. I come here to win. I don't come here to mess around. Lloyd Hannigan has got the toughest fight he's ever had in his whole career and equally Donald Curry has the toughest fight he's had in his whole career. This is, in my mind, undoubtedly the toughest opponent that Donald Curry has fought to date. So much then for the pre-match build-up and hype. Let us go ringside at Caesars and join our commentators Jim Watt and Reg Guthridge. So there's the entrance then, the trumpets, and the head down for Lloyd Hunnigan, who wants total concentration in this wine-coloured uh, sequin gown and led in by uh, Mickey Duff, of course, and behind him the former featherweight champion Bobby Neal. So it's a short walk from the dressing rooms, actually, to the ringside here at Caesars in Atlantic City for the first World Championship to be staged in this Circus Maximus showroom. And there he comes, carrying the WBA and WBC belts there. One of the entourage and uh, Akbar Mohammed on the right-hand side, his advisor. And there's no question about it, uh, now is seven defences of the championship and one of the best fighters, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, says wait for weight in the world today. And I'm not going to argue with Leonard on that score. So the Lone Star Cobra then from Texas. So as I was saying, Jim, now you can imagine the butterflies in the stomach probably of Hannigan or not. Now, you sparred with him a bit, and that wasn't that long ago, really. Yeah, well, the, the thing that sticks in my mind about Hannigan is how difficult it is to catch him with clean punches. There's the reflexes of a cat. He can actually do everything that Donald Curry can do, but we're about to find out tonight if he can do it as well as Don Curry. That's the big doubt. So there's the rundown of the rules there. No standing eight counts, and the, if one boxer goes down three times in a round, that rule is not in effect, because this is World Boxing Council. The uh, statistics, as always, and they came in at the same weight, 10 stone, six and a half.
of the evening, scheduled for 12 rounds for the undisputed welterweight championship of the world. The referee for this bout is Octavio Meiran. Introducing first in the red corner, he's wearing the multicolored trunks and weighs 146 and one half pounds. His professional record, an unblemished one, 27 consecutive victories, 15 by KO. He is ranked number one in the world in the welterweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, from London, England, let's have a hand for Lloyd Honey Honeygan. And his opponent in the blue corner, weighing 146 and one half pounds in the red trunks with gold trim, undefeated 25 and 0, 20 by KO, is from Fort Worth, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, undisputed, welterweight champion of the world, Donald the Lone Star Purple Henry. So the referee there, Octavio Meiran of Mexico, just uh, giving them the final rundown. He's refereed fights in Britain, but he's kept it short. And what a good idea that is, because they've got enough to worry about, and they should know the rules by now. WBC 12-round distances, because Hunnigan is the number one contender, and it's a mandatory defense by Curry, his eighth of this uh, welterweight championship. Both came in at 10 stone, six and a half. And at the introductions, I must say, Lloyd Hannigan looked uh, as relaxed as you would expect for such a big event as this one. The first world championship in this showroom at Caesars in Atlantic City. So now let's see whether the European champion, the unbeaten Hannigan, can uh, prove mobile, as manager Mickey Duff has been saying, that he thinks he'll give Curry his most difficult fight so far. And... Uh, my verbal sparring partner here, the former world champion Jim Watt, has actually sparred with Hunnigan, not for this fight, of course, but some time ago. And uh, he's emphasizing how difficult he is to hit. So, having said that, of course, we've marveled occasionally at this sort of gunfighter technique of Curry, the way he stands in front of an opponent, daring him, even though he's a good puncher, to throw punches so that he can strike with his nickname, Cobra, with a counter. Well, he's coming out sharp and confident, Jim Hunnigan, isn't he? Yeah, well, Hunnigan is the one who wants to find confidence on sure. He's never lacked confidence in the past. He's undefeated. But uh, he's facing a man people are hailing as a superstar. So if he can get himself a good start in the first round, it'll give himself a lot of confidence. And this is a good sharp start from Hunnigan. So he's uh, trying to dazzle Curry anyway with the secret and trunks, Hunnigan. So we wonder now with the arguments uh, or the debate sometimes whether Curry can still get down to the 10 stone, seven pound division and uh, retain all the strength. And they say he has to work hard to do it, but he keeps doing it. Off the right hand there, a bit long there, that one from uh, Curry. Just trying to faint a bit there, Curry, to draw Hunnigan's lead and counter. He's got that hunter's patience all the time, Curry gives the impression, Jim. Yeah, he gives the impression that as though he's ready to strike at any second, and that grinds and wears down some of his opponents. He's always directly in front of them, yet so difficult to land with clean punches himself, although Hunnigan is doing very well at this stage. What I admire about Hunnigan is the way he's come out and try and take the fight a bit to Curry in the opening round. He hasn't got off the fight at all. Three. 
So in uh, Curry's corner there, as I say, he's a 25 on the run unbeaten. And uh, he's still, he's actually parting from the man who's that similar the glasses there, Dave Corman. He's uh, staying with him for a couple of more fights and then he's uh, moving camps apparently. Won the vacant championship from a Korean. That was when uh, Sugar Ray Leonard gave up the title in 83. But he took a count in that one against the, the Korean. There it is. Just give you another bit of information there. He does it, he does it early, doesn't he? He's one of his favourite sounds. is walk softly, carry a big stick. So there's Hunnigan now. As I say, uh, also unbeaten. You can't knock that. So they get the the buzzer or the whistle to get the seconds out of the ring for round two. And a very encouraging start by Lord Hannigan. Six years a pro, remember, and uh, defeated the number one Horace Shufford to get this mandatory defence by Curry. Oh, what a, well, that's a punch. Hannigan's going to remember for a long time, and certainly Curry is. What a good shot to him. That was a perfect right hand punch. And Curry is in trouble. Curry's backing off. When have you ever seen Curry backing off like this before? Badly hurt there, a tremendous punch. That will give Hannigan all the confidence he needs. He's looking for the repeat now. There he's standing and trade with Curry. He can afford to at this stage with that punch going in. He's reminded the world champion that this is not an easy one and uh, manager Mickey Duff with uh, Hannigan said before the fight it would be his toughest fight and uh, at this point it is. So the old fashioned one two, the left hand followed by the right again there by Hannigan. Some of the old amateur training there from the South London Fisher Club those days. That's where he took up boxing. Oh, he doubled up the left hook a little bit there, Curry, though. A little more authority in that one. Well, that, that one's going to be marked down for a long time, didn't that? One right hand of Hannigan. Can he do it again? That's the punch that's going to give Hannigan all the confidence in the world. He knows we were speaking about Superman before the contest, but now Hannigan knows he has the power to upset and seriously hurt him. So that's just exactly what he needs, especially early in the contest, the second round. Well, Bobby Neal certainly helped Alan Minter in coaching him for world championships. Can he do it again with uh, Hannigan? He's just joined him in recent months. Oh, he's trying it again, Hannigan, right at the end of the round. He's got half a minute to do it. And Curry hasn't been shaken up like this, I shouldn't think, since his amateur days, nine years since he's lost the contest. So running out of time in the second, Hannigan, but there's a lot of authority in his punching, and Curry knows it. So I don't know why uh, the Mexican uh, referee uh, went over there to Curry's corner. Oh, that's a bit unusual. Meanwhile, he's collecting. Let's have a look at the replay now, Jim. There's the right well, hand. A cracking right hand, yeah. Curry did well to, to keep up right then. But for the, the rest of the round, all the authority of what was coming from Hunnigan. And uh, Curry finished the round in severe trouble. He seemed concussed. It was a perfect shot. Very surprised that Curry didn't go over. He managed to get himself back into the round again, but never troubled Hunnigan at all. And right at the end of the round, Hunnigan caught him with another couple of shots and had him all over the place. Up early from the stall there again in round three. Hunnigan had to be held off by the referee almost. What an encouraging start for the British European champion. Won all three championships against Sylvester Mitty last November. Well, 
Well, it's not a question of whether Curry may or may not be weight weakened. It's whether he can take the punches from Hunnigan. I don't think that uh, is part of the, the business now, really, Jim, with Curry. There's a little change in the eyes. The Hunnigan looks like the hunter now, and Curry looks like the hunted. You can see that a little bit of hesitation in Curry's eyes. He knows he needs a bit of success. He has to discourage Hunnigan a bit. But how he's going to do that, I don't know, because Hunnigan's really rolling now. I certainly underestimated Hannigan's confidence coming into the ring. Having seen him, as I say, right back since his boys' club and junior days, I wondered whether he might freeze a bit. But uh, I'm wrong, and I'm pleased to say it too. We haven't seen the viciousness and Curry's punches that we've come to expect. Part of that is probably because Hannigan's kept him on the defensive and Hannigan is always difficult to hit with clean punches because of the reflexes he has. And you can certainly say that with authority enough, Jim, apart from being a world ex-world champion yourself by having sparred frequently with Lloyd Hannigan. Anxiety coming from uh, the champions' corner men saying, pick the pace up now. At the moment, he can only do what Huntington will let him do. Oh, now they were tough punches. But well, that's the first time, Jim, that Curry's got through with some chops that really looked as though they may have hurt Huntington. He done, he's trying to claim a little bit. Hang on a second there. Yep, yep, and Curry knows that too. Curry's looking for another one. But he came back well with a left hook there, Hannigan. <laughs> yeah, he's shooting that little jab uh, uppercut to the body there, Curry. So that's where fitness really counts in this game now, is to be able to absorb the punches to the body. You take a shot off and you're well prepared for that, aren't you? You understand? That's the main thing. So let's have a look at that replay now. As you see, they're the, they're the body shots coming in from uh, Curry. That was a good spell from the champion there. And uh, Hannigan was quite pleased to hang on, but he came back at the end of the round. Coming out then for the fourth of a scheduled 12 for the World Worldweight Championship WBC version. And a good start by Hannigan. But uh, midway through that third round, Don Curry just reminding him that uh, that's why he's unbeaten for nine years and seven defences. Most of Curry's previous opponents have been st standing off and throwing one punch at a time. I think the reason Hannigan's been so successful is putting punches together and keeping uh, Curry on his back foot. But uh, Curry had that little bit of success, which he badly needed to get his own confidence back in where it should be. I think Curry's too much of a good pro to underestimate somebody, but I suspect he might have done there, and he ran onto that left hook. Hannigan certainly listened to the advice of the corner men there. This is Duff and Neil to keep the head rolling a bit. He's uh, taken a couple of Curry's best shots to the body. Certainly, so far, Curry's lived up to all he promised that he would do, Jim. I wonder whether he was just sort of 
whispering in the dark a bit as sometimes boxers do but uh, he's, he's carried out what he said he would yeah well see i think the big difference hunnigan's going into the fight knowing it's going to be a real tough fight whereas maybe curry beginning to think there's nobody in the welterweight division to trouble him therefore his attitude wasn't right a little bit uh, lethargic if you like in the first couple of rounds but uh, curry at all times is looking for big shots whereas Hunnigan is keeping more, more fluent in his move. There goes the big right hand from Cunningham. He's looking for this all the time. They yeah, started to open up a bit more, Curry. But he's bobbing, weaving Hunnigan the whole time now, trying to stay away from him. If he can just keep a fair distance from that right hand, the, when it, by the time it reaches, it's some of this thing is gone, not all of it. about it Jim Hannigan's fought a, a smart fight in his first four rounds hasn't he done the right things most of the time of course you get hit against good fighters anyway he certainly has I was speaking to Mickey Duff the other day and he reckoned that the fight was pretty close after six rounds then Hunnigan had a great chance because everybody knows Curry's been struggling to make welterweight for quite some time and it's going to be very close after six be rounds if it goes on like this be you're in beautiful shape, the boys are good. Take and you feel good, right? Good. He's That's it, man. So coming out for the fifth, and Curry remained on the stool, Jim, you notice, right until the last second, whereas uh, Hannigan came up on the, the ten-second uh, whistle. So they've been doing their best to pump confidence into Hannigan in uh, between rounds there, but I tell you, he hasn't really needed it. to start in the disobeying of it. And Hannigan knows it. He's going to try and plant that right hand again. And if he does it, I think this is probably the upset. I nearly was going to say of the century, but certainly close to it, Jim. Yeah, well, he's got him all over the place again. Hannigan has been troubling Curry a lot more with his punches than, than what we expected. A great round for Hannigan here. Imagine that was going through Curry's mind. What's going on here? They didn't tell me this fellow was as good as this. And he's bleeding from the mouth now, the champion. And Hannigan getting a fair share of support from what seems like some London supporters on the stage here at Caesars. Oh. Good round indeed now. Midway through the fifth for Hannigan. No way has Curry been in trouble in any of his fights as he is in this one. So he can get a bit right hand happy there, Hannigan, and get away with it. Jim. This has been a tremendous round for Hannigan. He's never made a mistake. He's never taken a decent punch in return. He's had Curry all over the place. Curry's legs are not looking good at all. He doesn't have any power in his own work. This has been a tremendous round for Hannigan. This round, and the next, if Hannigan just keeps what he's doing for the next round, I don't see that Curry can come back. A good left hook from Curry, but uh, no conviction in his work so far. on a bit inside now that's why the Mexican referee is getting between them what a good round for Hannigan this has turned out and I think for a change in fact not for a change for the first time in his life Curry's pleased to hear the bell well he'll have 
to work really hard there in the champion's corner. Now, replay there. That was the right hand. It was long, but it just it got the message. No matter how far it travelled, Curry got the message. The overhead look at this replay, Jim. Now, the right hand coming in. Yeah, bang on the button. And again, Curry, lucky to keep up right. Up. Hunnigan is boxing tremendously well, far better than I expected. So coming up for the six, just getting some of the water off uh, Hunnigan there. Uh, I think he can slip punches without any aids. And he looks as though he's going to carry on where he left off Jim, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he's really got his shoe on the road. He's got far more confidence at this stage in the fight than he even dreamed he would have. Everything's going his way. He's only taken one good shot in the whole of the fight. He's troubled Curry a few times. So there's no reason now why he shouldn't fully believe in himself that he's going to pick up the title. Well, I tell you, the Texan gunfighter is in a bit of trouble here. That's a question of the having shot the bolt, really, but it's just misfiring the whole time. Not the whole time, but by his standards. When you think how he stood and outpunched Colin Jones, who's noted for his punching power, murdered Milton McCrory, knocked out his last challenger, Edwin Rodriguez, a tough man. looking for openings the whole time now, Hannigan. It's, he's got Curry on the defensive. Curry's cut on the eye ridge. Left eye, Curry's cut. Curry's cut under the left eye. So not only pride being hurt, but body as well. And the referee's stopping to have a look at that. Is he going to call a doctor? No. Shouldn't really wipe it away with his hand over the thought. It's... Just above the eye, it's in an awkward position, that cut, Jim. Yep. It's in a position that could get far worse. Curry landed a good overhand right. They bang on target, caught Hannigan a bit high, but didn't trouble him in the least, which is good news. Well, I tell you, at this stage of the game, you fancy saying, well, we should start light, lighting the beacons, I think, for a Britain to become a world champion because he really has dictated the last two rounds anyway, and he started off well enough as well. Any shots that Curry does land, Hunnigan's taking them high on the forehead. He hasn't taken a clean punch in the chin all night long. And there's lots of oohs and ahs there from the American crowd as Hannigan lays into the champion. He's just got to have that professional's care a bit now, Hannigan. He's, he's got this championship well within his grasp, but he mustn't make mistakes. And he looks so weary, shaking his head as he goes back to the corner there. And I'm wondering if it all could be over as the doctor comes in as well. And there's a lot of consternation there in the corner. You can see the referee looking over. And it looks as though they're sending for a second opinion. Another doctor coming in as we look at the replay there. Well, it may have been a head clash, who knows, that caused it. And he's become champion of the world, Hannigan. And he's just thrown himself across the ring. Mickey Duff's lying on the floor with him. It is really incredible because that is one of the biggest turn-ups, I'm going to say it, in the history of boxing. Because Don Curry, let's face it, was unbeaten and looked unbeatable. And this fellow, Lloyd Hannigan from London, really did the business in every way and i've never seen such a joyous scene at an end of a fight as you will with that one uh, and it looks as though the doctors have stopped it or they could have even retired him in the corner
and we knew Jim at the end of that round the way Curry was looking that he didn't want to go on with that fight whatever the yep. extent of the injury nothing to do with injury Curry's heart was out of the fight it's been hurt all night long tremendous performance from Hunnigan the official decision or verdict may be cut eye decision but forget that Hunnigan proved he was the better man all night long no trouble at all it was the boss from start to finish and you'll have to look at Curry's face he knows it as well as Hunnigan does well, this is a time of my life when it's a pleasure to say I couldn't have been more wrong, as they say, because I really didn't think Hannigan could get it together to beat this fellow Curry like that. And it's a pleasure to say you're wrong under those circumstances, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, delighted. Uh, we, we reckoned Curry was a superstar. We've watched him against Colin Jones and other top-class fighters. We knew Hannigan being undefeated had the arrogance of an undefeated fighter, but we weren't sure it was in the same league. See, here we go again. See, that, that's where they met uh, together. I'm not, I don't know whether he's claiming that was the, the clash that caused the cut or not. But uh, I tend to forget about the cut. Hunnigan was the better man tonight, and he's a champion because he was the better man. So there they are, then, putting the WBC belt around Hunnigan's waist. Well, the left eye stops the belt at the end of the sixth round. The winner by technical knockout and new undisputed welterweight champion of the world from London, England. So that was it, an official stoppage there by the referee on the, the advice of two doctors. And uh, Hunnigan there, the undisputed world champion. It's, uh, I tell you, I still can't really believe my eyes, and I know Curry can't believe what's happened to him. Well, how exciting. We've just witnessed a supreme performance by Lloyd Hunnigan, and just to show you how emphatic it was, all three judges gave him four of those rounds. Now, Curry's injuries, well, he, the cut eye required 20 plastic stitches, uh, he's got a broken nose, that's confirmed by x-ray, and he required a stitch in the lower lip. His reaction, he said it was an accidental butt that caused the injury, but he was not complaining about it. He said he knew something was wrong before he even got into the ring. He said he felt no zap at all in his dressing room. He said that Hunnigan is a very good fighter. He could hold the title for some time. As far as Curry is concerned, he said he will be coming back to the ring, but not at 10 stone 7, not at a welterweight, so there will be no rematch. We've had a call from Colin Jones, who suggests that, of course, Colin was well beaten by Don Curry, who said that if Hunnigan would fight him, then he would be happy to take the match. Well, we've seen an incredible performance. It's uh, virtually impossible to believe uh, that any British uh, boxer has performed more in one fight. We'll get Lloyd Hunnigan's reaction. Breathless that. after that wonderful performance by Lloyd Hunnigan, now one of only two undisputed champions in the world. The other one is Marvin Hagler. That is a heady thought, isn't it? After escaping the frenzy of excitement in the ring at Atlantic City, the new world champion talked to Reg Guttridge, and he was in no doubt how Curry's cut eye had occurred. It was a, um, a punch because, you see, inside, I was throwing these little, I switched the circle because I knew I could do it, and Bobby says, Lloyd, we're well, wasting your talent, man, like I've been saying. Switch the circle when you're inside and throw the little uppercut. And I throw the little uppercut, and I think it's when I came back with the left foot, or Mickey been telling me to come back with all week, all those weeks yeah. up the gym in the cat skills, and I wasn't throwing it because I felt so good. Um, today, all week, we've been feeling so good. I sit down in my bedroom with Bobby, we'll go for a walk, and I said to him, this is like I'm walking in Brixton, this is like I'm, I'm walking on Warwick Road, this is like I'm sitting in my front room. It didn't come like I was going to have a fight. I was it's telling everyone. I that. mean, it's considering he had been beaten for, what, eight, nine years? Yeah, it's, since he was you, 16 years old. When did you feel when you got in the ring that you could do it? At what point? When you nailed him with that first right hand? In the first round, man, because Daryl Curry showed me respect right. in the first round. He showed me respect. And, after the first round. and the first round, that was it. After the first round, I knew I had to fight one because he didn't... He, I thought Don was going to come and start throwing bombs that he usually do. But once he he knew that I knew that he was going to do, so he didn't. And once he'd done that, I knew I had to fight one. Well, I'll tell you, it's it's such a marvellous upset. There's going to be a lot of excitable people in Britain when they yeah, see this now. Yeah, say that again. And, uh, well, I hope if you've won it in America, I dare say you're going to defend it in America, but you might finish up doing no, it in Britain, no, eh? No, no. We, we may, with well, there's no place see. like home at the end of the day. He's proved he you can see, win abroad. We may yeah. well do it in, in London. In London. I, plan, I plan to come to America to win the world title, but I've done that now, so my, my fans in London will believe me. Now I can give them a chance to see Lloyd Hunter go and defend his world championship. Great. Well, congratulations to everybody concerned, the manager, Thank the you. trainer, Bobby Neal, and Thank you, Bobby. best of all you. Thank, Thank you. you.